I wrote this book because I became concerned that the curriculum in our schools was getting too narrowly focused around just two subject areas, math and literacy, with all the emphasis on standardized testing uh, in only those two subject areas. We were losing a lot of the richness and the imagination that teachers bring to their trade. And that's what the topic that I'm most interested in. Like when I, this book is called What Kind of Citizen? Educating Our Children for the Common Good. But what I'm most, what I mean by citizen is not a narrow definition of citizen, like someone who just votes or pays taxes or something. But what I mean is what kind of society uh, do we want to create? Uh, in schools, I want to see teachers come alive with the passions and interests that they bring and that their students bring to the classroom. And uh, so I wrote the book really to make that point and to uh, share some research and show examples of schools that were harnessing the passions and interests of teachers uh, and students. One of the reasons I asked you to draw your ideal vision of a school is because sometimes people say think that citizenship education is just something that takes place in one class. And if you don't have those classes that nobody's learning anything about citizenship. I don't think that's true because uh, everything about the school screams citizenship education. Everything gives you an idea about what kind of citizen the teachers in the school and the society is asking you to be. It's a, a cultural shift within the culture of education where we need to uh, give students more responsibilities for uh, how they handle themselves, how they uh, choose materials that they want to use, how they choose questions that they want to investigate. Well, let me ask a couple of you, like, what, what do you think a good citizen is? What makes up a good citizen? Together, of course, we can create more than we could on our own, so, yeah. Just to be a citizen is someone who will work for the group rather than uh, individual. Someone that would participate in, I don't know, discussing issues with the country, issues with society, uh, issues with other places even. Like, I don't know, if you're in Canada, you might as well talk about what's happening in Syria because maybe as a country, you could try to influence what's going on. Professors love to put things in little boxes, so we came up with these three categories of, of good citizenship. The first is called personally responsible citizenship, okay? The second was called participatory citizenship, which means like participation, um, like some of you were talking about. And the third was called social justice oriented citizenship. Okay, three visions of what it means to be a good citizen. So, like one of the things I, I say sometimes is if the participatory citizens are organizing a food drive, then what are the personally responsible citizens doing? What do you think? Running it. They're donating a can of food, right? Because they're nice people, right? They're good people, so they're giving a can of food. And then there was this third vision of a good citizen, the social justice oriented citizen. And those were programs that were asking kids to ask tough questions um, about the root causes of problems. So if like, to go back to that example I was giving, if the participatory citizens were organizing a food drive and the personally responsible citizens were donating food, the social justice oriented citizens were asking, how come in one of the richest countries in the world, people are hungry, right? How can that be? And what can, we, what can we do about it? When you bring in controversial issues in the classroom, you don't know how kids are gonna react. You don't know what experiences they've had. And so it's easier to just say, um, listen, it's important for you to be honest and be a good person because no one's gonna disagree with that, right? That's not controversial. No parents are gonna complain. Um, when you bring in controversial issues and issues that are have deeper questions about how we wanna organize our society and how we wanna live together, um, those are ones that in, entail emotional uh, that sometimes are, are difficult to deal with. You have to understand like how to solve a problem and how to like contribute to solving a problem to be able to ask the question like what is the problem and what, how will we come up with a solution to the problem. So I think that, that's why that one's so uncommon. I think that we could do a lot to loosen up the school environment so that kids are uh, highly encouraged to experiment with ideas that they're not familiar with, to ask questions, to challenge um, what they see around them. These are the things that make learning so rich and so interesting. 
And uh, I think that when we create that kind of climate uh, in schools, the questions come. As soon as kids learn that they're supposed to and they're allowed to ask questions, uh, they start coming really fast.